sinners. They are worse than dogs and pigs. Stone them. They are sick. They need to be cured. I am lesbian. I was raped by a friend. He wanted to change me. They should beat him up thoroughly and definitely he'll stop being gay. These were the words that were spoken to me by someone who is so dear to me, yet she also knows that I'm gay. Do you remember the 6th of September when the gays in India finally stopped being criminals? That was a great step forward, but how many steps do we need to take to change the mindsets of society? I wonder. Now, let me take you back to my beautiful homeland of Zimbabwe, where it is still punishable to make love as a gay man. You can either be arrested or you can be made to pay a fine of 5,000 US dollars or even both. Growing up, I used to like playing ball, football just like any other boy. And when I was now in my teenage years, that's when I started realizing that I liked boys. Not as teammates, but I romantically liked boys. And this became one of my darkest moments because going to church, the preacher used to say that gays and lesbians are doomed for hell. And the man who ruled my country for 37 years, Robert Mugabe, referred to gays and lesbians as being worse than dogs and pigs. I hated myself. I felt like I was a sinner. I felt so useless, like I was not a real man. And this was at a time when I was a teenager, a time when we all need acceptance, confidence, and love. But one thing kept me going, and those were my mother's words, when she said to me, education is your lifetime inheritance. And so my education became my comfort. And I enrolled in development studies, and eventually my education paid off when I got my first internship in Johannesburg, South Africa. I was so excited to finally be moving to a country that could accept me for who I am, a country where I was no longer going to be seen as a, as, as a, as a, criminal, as a criminal, and a country where gays and lesbians enjoy the same equal rights as everyone else, where they can even marry. And I was thinking to myself, my marriage should be around the corner now. But working in the development field, I started giving some of my time to LGBT grassroots organizations, mainly the ones that were working with migrant LGBT people. And that's when I started realizing that it was not all rosy. I came across a group of eight gay men from Zimbabwe, and all eight of them were living in a one-room flat. They were not able to get jobs because the home officials that were supposed to help them, they, didn't, they were homophobic and they also did not like migrants. And in order for them to survive, they started working as sex workers. With time, one of them got sick and he was sent back to Zimbabwe. And within a few days time, a phone call came through, he passed on, he died of an HIV related illness. In Zimbabwe, it is difficult for a person to get proper health care, especially as a sexual minority. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, two of the same people are now living on the streets homeless and, and depending on drugs. That is what depression led them to. With time, my own best friend also decided to move to South Africa, hoping to finally be in a country that could accept him for who he was. And unfortunately, he went through the same challenges and he gave up and committed suicide. Zimbabwe is ranked number 19 in the world when it comes to deaths by suicide. And most of the people committing suicide are LGBT people because they do not have family support in most cases. They are also disowned by the family. And worse still, the community doesn't accept them. In September, when India was still celebrating the repeal of Section 377. Can I tell you, in Zimbabwe, a man had to, had to leave his job, which he had, he had for the past 15 years, because a daily news company was threatening to expose him in the press of his sexuality. And what did he do? He went on stage on assembly 
and he announced to the students that he's gay. And this resulted in him getting death threats on himself, his family, and even on his pets. That was when I decided I need to go back to Zimbabwe to make a change from within by starting Purple Hand Africa. You might wonder why the name Purple Hand Africa. Let me take you to one of the most progressive LGBT communities in the world of San Francisco. In, 19, in the 1960s, the LGBT community was so tired of a newspaper company called The Examiner, which was writing a series of anti-LGBT articles. And they decided to go and peacefully protest in front of the building. And while they were protesting, the workers of the building went to the top floor and they poured purple ink on the protesters. And what did they do with this ink? They pasted everywhere their mark on the building and everywhere on the streets. And this became a mark that, liberate, that changed the whole LGBT movement. And this is the same mark that I need to make on Zimbabwe. And not just Zimbabwe, because LGBT people have been called un-African. This is the same mark that I need to make on the rest of the African continent. When we see the rainbow, flag, the rainbow flag, it's a flag that gives us hope. It's a flag that makes us smile and makes us dream of a better tomorrow. And this is a symbol of the LGBT community. And so in Purple Hand Africa, we're going to employ the rainbow journey of empowerment. Through the rainbow journey of empowerment, red, which resembles life, that will be activism. And orange, which resembles healing, that's going to be community art workshops and yellow, which resembles the sunlight. Yes, your aha moment. This is when we'll go with our beneficiaries on exposure trips, whereby they can also be able to come across other LGBT mentors and role models that can help them to come back to Zimbabwe and employ the same techniques that they've also been using in their own communities. And through green, which resembles nature, but to me, it resembles integration. We cannot do it by ourselves. And hence, with other social change makers, we can go in camps. And on these camps, we can be able to become solution makers for the rebuilding of Zimbabwe. Through blue, which resembles harmony, this will be our, our safe spaces because we still need to come together to be able to be a strength of each other. And purple, which resembles the spirit. This will be our information and referral. Because at the end of the day, we all need opportunities for us to be able to get employment or even to create jobs, even for some of the people that are prejudiced against LGBT people. But as we all know, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a few steps. So we're going to start small with community art workshops, whereby we're going to come together as the LGBT community to express our challenges, our strife, as well as our hope for the future through music, through poetry, and through creative writing. And once they have a healthy well-being, then they can be strong to go through the rest of the rainbow journey of empowerment. I have one thing that I need to ask you all. Can you just have a look at the person sitting on your left? And the one on your right? Have a little self-introspection. You can even close your eyes. And look at me. Don't you all deserve respect and acceptance for who we are? I accept you. We yes. accept you. I accept you. I accept you. I accept you. I accept you. We accept you. We accept you. We accept you. I 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 accept everyone. Thank you. Thank you.